A couple of months ago, I watched a really cool video from SparkFun. Uh, it was kind of a demonstration of a, a lighting system they built in a conference room. And it was a series of kind of hanging incandescent light bulbs kind of covering the, the ceiling. And it was used, uh, I think they had kind of changing colored lights in there to, uh, in time with the music. And there's also a game that could be played. But the, what really interested me was the light. They had uh, taken all the incandescent light bulbs, stripped out the filaments and placed an LED inside. And it was such a simple thing, but the, the pearl bulb diffused the light and created this really cool effect. The, uh, so, so it kind of got me thinking this. It made me kind of want to have a go making my own. I, I didn't have a entire room to fill with this, so I wanted to come up with a, a purpose or a reason for doing it. And uh, I kind of stumbled upon the idea of making a kind of a, what we'd call a light installation or a small um, kind of corporate you know, kind of business type light that might hang in an entrance hall or a, a reception or a lobby or something that would communicate a single piece of information. So the rate at which the lights flashed or perhaps the color would communicate a single metric, possibly um, sales, visitor numbers for that day, targets. Uh, so it would be interesting, but it would also be potentially slightly useful as well. And so that kind of was my, was my target or aim for this project. Uh, this is what I've got to end up with. Um, certainly not what I set out to make, but um, I'm fairly pleased with it. And I'm just gonna run through some of the, the problems I encountered now. So I originally aimed to build a hanging light fixture, uh, a cluster of light bulbs, which would hang kind of randomly down on lengths of wire from a, a central kind of mounting point. And that's what I kind of, uh, it's what I built first of all, and I'll try and link in some pictures of that. But um, to do that, I kind of took some light bulbs. These are um, they're not really available for sale in the UK anymore because uh, they're very, very wasteful energy-wise. Um, but you can still get them because they're sold for industrial use, um, and it's really easy just to strip out and break the the back piece in that piece, and you can then just slot in an LED and glue it in place. And so I kind of create. I um, think about a dozen of these. Um, it's hanging from uh, this speaker wire. It's uh, so it would hang down like so. That was kind of looking pretty good. It started out at least. And uh, I kind of laser cut and painted up a, a ceiling rose, I guess. And that would have kind of mounted uh, along the top. The wire would then have uh, hung down through the middle like so and with lights on the ends. And these all hung at different lengths and they flashed and it, it looked good, it worked. But the problem was the wire I'd chosen, I couldn't get it straight. The, the way the wire kind of came out the top here as well wasn't ideal. So I don't know if that'll come out. It, um, it doesn't come out straight, it curved, which doesn't look nice. You could have fixed that, came with one option, just uh, mounting a little piece of plastic kind of uh, sticking out which would guide it and start it off. Um, but once you get past that, it doesn't hang straight. Um, the light bulbs aren't particularly heavy, so they don't add much weight to it. And so it's crinkled and it just looked really ugly. And it just kind of, I kind of left the project there to be honest. I wasn't gonna go any further with this um, kind of hanging method. The, I did kind of consider enamels kind of copper wire at the time. Um, but again, I didn't think I could get it to hang straight. It was, um, you're always going to get some kinks in it working with this. And so that, to me, it kind of ruled it out. So I started looking at other options. So rather than hanging these lights, if I can't get a straight wire, I thought maybe I could put them in something. So I started out with um, a fish bolt. I picked that up, kind of drilled a hole in the back, and it seemed to go all right. But then the next day, a kind of fracture must have formed, taking it out. And so I finally kind of got around to looking at this project again a few days ago and picked up this uh, kind of fairly large vase in Ikea and I drilled a hole in the back. Um, I, at the same time I switched over to this enamel to wire because I was after something a lot smaller and a lot more discreet. So whilst I can't get the kinks out, I can at least um, make it not particularly noticeable. And so there's lots of kind of enamel to wire running all along to the back and out here. And it, it kind of looks Okay, and so that's the, where I'm at now with this. Um, I've just started to kind of box everything up and I kind of take a look at that now. So this is the guts of the device. 
you can see all the wires uh, come out the, the back here. I decided not to go through the base as I tried with the glass fish bowl. And it's because of the thickness of the glass. It uh, gets incredibly thick at the bottom and it's a very, at least for me, I've never really attempted this before. It's, it seemed very kind of risky. So I chose a, um, a fairly kind of thin point back here to go through. Um, not ideal, but it's uh, kind of the most pragmatic choice, I think. The the lights then connect to this spark fan kind of breakout board. This is for the TLC5940 chip. I believe it's the same one that used in their project as well. And that's allowing me to drive um, the uh, kind of variety of LEDs with a reasonable amount of power. And that kind of connects to the microcontroller. And for this, I'm using a Teensy 2.0 down there, um, just because that's what I had lying around for this project. Um, and once again, I'm using one of my um, Ethernet to serial kind of adapters to, for the internet connectivity. And that would then mount in this um, kind of semi transparent acrylic box that was laser cut. The would be a lid on the top of there, and the vase would then sit on top of the box itself, uh, probably all kind of glued together. Um, so you kind of sit this thing down, plug in power via USB, Ethernet connection, and it kind of uh, it should just work. The, the but the biggest problem I found, as I mentioned, is the wire, and I've even started to encounter problems with the enameled copper wire. It um, it's flexible this stuff, but it uh, after a while it will kind of snap, and it does kind of uh, it can be difficult to kind of find and repair. So for example, if I were to lose a wire in here right now, it'd be almost impossible for me to fix it without having to dismantle the entire thing. The, the one benefit of the enamel copper wire is that uh, there is no sheath needed and it allows me to kind of bundle up all of these wires into a really small area and it kind of saves so much space. It, it's really nice to work with and you just kind of just file off the bit at the end and solder in and don't need to worry about kind of shorting out anywhere. Um, I, I'm slightly worried about uh, the glass edge here, um, kind of grating off for short, but I, there's not much I can do about that. Um, so this is uh, this is pretty much complete. I've just finished wiring this up and programming it. I'm just going to kind of glue this all in place and mount it now. So here's the finished thing. It's uh, mounted on the base. It's kind of fairly well attached. The cables kind of snake out the back and in. It's not ideal. I'd love it to go straight through the bottom and in so you wouldn't have seen anything, but it's just the way it is. Um, and I've got an ethernet port and USB for power. And it's kind of, it's easy to carry, it's easy to move around. It should be relatively durable now, it's all in place. And unlike uh, a larger hanging fitting, um, it doesn't need to be fitted. It just kind of works. You sit it on a desk, you plug in a network connection, plug in power, and obviously it, it then connects to the internet. It queries a predefined URL, and in this case, it pulls back a single number, which is then used to uh, kind of control the lighting within this. That number can affect, in this case, the the rate at which it, they kind of pulse in and out. Um, it's still kind of early stages, so it looks like the software might have uh, failed on that occasion to connect. Um, but kind of error handling aside, it, um, it's kind of there. The, mostly the, the kind of current um, pulse sequence isn't great, but, um, but this is kind of flashing at quite a high rate at the moment, it's representing a, uh, um, a larger number. Um, and it kind of goes down to a very, very kind of subtle pulsation. The, it's a nice idea, this. It's something I'd potentially like to explore in the future, but the, the enamel copper wire does make it very difficult. Um, there are issues with um, the fragility of it, um, which make me reluctant to try something like this. Again, I'm not aware of anything better, sadly, to use for this. Um, any other wire I've looked at wasn't quite right or good enough to create a nice effect. Um, so there's a few ideas I'll play around with, but for now this is um, kind of done.